Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the Maysim by Lost Surfboards. Now it's a pretty clever name. You've got Mayhem and Asymmetrical together, Maysim. And that's what these boards are. This is an asymmetrical surfboard. I've got three in the exact same dimensions. They're all stock 5.3s. These two were set up for me as a regular footer, and the bulk of the testing for this review are written on these two boards. And then I also got one set up for a goofy footer and took that out for a spin just to see the differences under my feet. So this is gonna be a really fun review. Get your favorite drink, sit back, and enjoy the show. Now as we dive into the attributes of this board, let's talk for a second about symmetrical and asymmetrical and what they mean. Asymmetrical, if we look at this tail right here, and this is a round tail, a symmetrical board would have the round tail the same on both sides. So they would look identical on either side of the board. Asymmetrical is one side of the board has one design and the other side has a different and they don't match. And what I love about what Matt's done is he's figured out a way to put a round tail and his famous rocket tail together. So for me, the question is why asymmetricals? Now I've been doing a lot of research learning about this stuff so I can talk about it intelligently, but I wanna talk about this from a surfer's perspective, not from a shaper's perspective, because I'm not a shaper, I'm a surfer. And I can articulate the best I can about what I'm feeling under my feet. Now, diving into the research, a lot of the asymmetrical designs and shapers talking about it, it's about how front side we use our toes to grip and to balance, and we use our ankle, how it hinges, front side and how different that is from backside and how we use our heel. Now, some of it's pretty extreme for what I've seen in board design and concept with theory. And I, I feel like what I like about what Matt's done is he's just really simplified it. And what I mean by that is when we go into the attributes here and we start looking at how Matt set up the fins, from a surfer's perspective and making it simple, he didn't move fin position on any of the fins. So if I want to write it as a thruster, that's how my normal symmetrical boards are. I put the fins in and I go surf. Now what happens when I went surfing on this particular board right here, I went to surf it like a normal 5.3 thruster, but the feeling under my feet is a little bit different and that's what I think we're all interested in. Now before we talk about how the board felt under my feet and what is going on with the asymmetrical tail design back here, Let's look at this design from right here forward because they look even. When I look at this board and I hold this board, I, it doesn't start getting asymmetrical till back here. So if we look at it from here forward, it reminds me of the Puddle Jumper HP, right? Wide point front from center, a lot of foam under here. Remember, this board's 5'3", and if I'm 160 pounds, it's going to have to have some foam in it for it to be able to handle that 1 to 3, 1 to 4 foot surf real well. So great paddler, now relatively flat and rocker under the belly, so it's got that get up and go speed. It's very forgiving up in here by my front foot. Now if I, if I feel the rail, it's nice and soft, similar to that Puddle Jumper HP. A lot of the stuff Matt does is very forgiving in small waves. Now as we move back in here to the tail, you look at it's got a good amount of surface area. This is a pretty wide tail, but what's cool about the design as we start diving into the rocket tail and the round tail is that Matt's done some stuff in here that will manipulate this board and get it easy for me to turn and get it vertical. And that's when we start getting into what makes this board unusual compared to symmetrical boards that I've been riding. Now the concave it's running, it's running a single concave all the way through with a light double between the fins right here. And as you can see on this side right here, this has a single channel. And the reason I point that out is because it's an increasing concave and increasing tail rocker on the toe side. So I want to talk a little bit about the toe side, me going front side on this side of the board with the rocket tail, because it's really important. This is what the asymmetrical design is all about, is that it has a longer rail line on my front side. So I can, I have a little bit more rail to work with in the water so I can drive off the bottom and accumulate or, or gain speed down the line. And then I have a shorter rail line on my heel side, which is on my backside turns, right? And by having a shorter rail line here, 
that makes my turning radius shorter and I can go way faster. So let's just picture me going front side to do a, um, like a big roundhouse cutback. I go down the line and as I'm going down the line front side, I've got the rail on my toe side to gain that speed and then I hit my cutback and because the rail line on my heel side is shorter, I can do a tighter turn and, and get my board up in the pocket faster than if both sides were equal on the rail length, right? Now, another thing I wanna point out is that because this side on, the, on my front side is a rocket tail, what I like about what Matt did here is that it gives me something to pivot off right here. And a rocket tail is basically a diamond tail. So it's a, reduce, a reduction in rail line here compared to the end of the tail. So that's also gonna help with sharp turns front side, which is a really big deal because I don't wanna sacrifice being able to go vertical even though this rail line's longer than my heel side. Now that we've talked about the front side, we're gonna talk about me going back side. This is my heel side, like I mentioned. This rail line is a little shorter than my toe side. And like I was saying, quick, real quick turns going back. If I'm going down the line, I can do a quick like down carve right into a bottom turn. You can feel that. So even though I'm talking front side still, every time I make a turn, so I'm coming off, like let's say off the top and I'm going to go down to the bottom. Well, that quick turn off the top, I'm utilizing the short rail line to get that turn done faster, right? And then I'm driving off the bottom to do the next turn. And what I noticed about this, this board, is those turns were faster and because it has a round tail and water adheres to curves, I was driving through my turns on my roundhouses. It was actually gaining speed and giving me great hold. So I noticed that front side. Now back side, if I'm going back side and I drop in and I go to the bottom, remember, shorter rail line back side, I can get a tighter bottom turn as opposed to if it was the same length as my toe side. So there are some great advantages to some of the asymmetrical designs. And what I like about what Matt did is that he just made it super simple for me to be me and surf the way I want and get this board to perform in the pocket, both front side and back side with ease. Now, as we look at the tail, and I was talking about, even though I have more rail line on my front side, something to push off of and generate speed because it has a little bit more concave because of the channel. Now this channel's got a couple different purposes. Number one, it's gonna give me bite, traction on the face. It's also gonna um, promote a little bit of drive and it's giving it more concave and um, exit rocker. So what I have is a straight edge here, just so we can look at it. I'm just past the side fins and as I come in here, you can start to see that there's more concave over here because of the channel and there's all that's also going to create a little bit more rocker on my toe side and the reason i want to point that out is because that toe side rocker on my front side i believe will it will help this board get a little bit more traction and get vertical faster even though it has a longer rail line so one of the things that I believe happens when you have a longer rail line on your toe side is that it's gonna draw your turn out more, right? Well, because this board's so short, I can put it where I want and how I wanna put it, and I believe that this channel with the concave and a little extra rocker here, that's why it feels so good. I can get it vertical real fast, and then when I wanna turn and I wanna switch to my heel side rail on a cutback, it's because the rail line over here is shorter, I'm feeling that quick whip. Now I wanna talk about the fins I chose in Futures. This particular board, I started as a thruster. And what I wanted to do is I, I chose a fin that I'm familiar with. This is the AM2 large honeycomb. It's got a medium flex pattern. And the reason I chose these is because I'm looking for, I wanna focus on the asymmetrical tail and what it feels like under my foot. And this is really about board design, not so much about fin. And after writing both boards as quads and thrusters, I'm gonna say this. The thruster looks better on video. The quad felt like it had more speed. But when I look at the footage, the thruster actually looks faster, but the quad felt faster. So I divided the footage for you guys to see it as quad first, thruster second, so you can choose for yourself. 
Now I want to talk about the fin setups and the fins I chose in the FCS. I started with a quad set in this. I went with the performers in the performance core carbon. I wanted a stiffer fin, really get the feel of the board. And I ran it with the, the rea medium reactor quad rears. And this had that speed. This is what I'm talking about. This is a pretty typical quad setup for me. I like this. This fin has, it's a neutral fin, so it's not too much rake and it's not too upright. And I feel like the partner of these two together, because quads um, are fast, I still want that quick pivot. These felt great. I also ran the performers as a thruster. Felt okay. Felt like it was lacking a little bit of speed, probably because it's not enough rake. So I went with the Kalohan Dinos. And that's what I do. I come in and switch fins. I'll go ride for an hour, hour and a half, come in, change some fins, see if I can feel anything different. So still performance core. And I really like this fin because it has a little bit more rake and I felt like it gave me more speed. So let's look at some waves together. This is a really nice right. I love it. Come off the bottom, quick turn, lots of spray right there. You see how easy it is to keep the speed? Nice roundhouse, board's just holding and gaining speed the whole time. Nice turn backside. This is a quad. Watch the tail, a little bit more playful. Super fun. Coming off the bottom, top turn, the board looks really loose. Tail gets a little loose right there, right back into a top turn right there. The board really had good flow. And as you can see, the board goes just as good backside as it does front side. I really didn't notice any difference in performance in top to bottom surfing. Watch the roundhouse. Wave goes flat, gaining speed. One thing I noticed about the asymmetrical board is that because the rail line going on my heel side is shorter, I feel like I could do really quick turns and um, enjoy the roundhouses gaining speed and quick wraps like that right there. Now that we've talked about the board that was designed for regular footers like myself, I want to talk about my curiosity and what happened on the one that was designed for a goofy footer. I say we talk theory first, then we look at some waves together, and then we'll talk about what it felt like under my feet. So theory, in theory, we have the toe side has a shorter rail line, right? And we've got a longer rail line on the back side. We have the pivot point here. We also have the channel on my backside, so there's gonna be a little bit more exit rocker, right? Well, with this side being a little bit flatter, I feel like because it has a shorter rail line, I should be able to get vertical, but we have to remember, round tails don't like to go vertical easily. They like to do round turns. And we also don't have the exit rocker back here like we did when this was on the toe side. So let's look at some waves, see what happened, and then we'll come back from there. So this is the board that was designed for our goofy footer. You can tell there's a little riv in the wave, but there's, it's just not as smooth. It's just still doing a decent turn, but look at this little right right here. Quick check turn. You can tell I'm a little off right there, but it still has the speed. There's the speed just in board design alone. Now the wave kind of just goes flat and I don't get to do anything else on it, but I wanted you to see the speed and flow. Here's a little tiny left. You can tell not super bad turns, but the board and I are not in agreement about anything. Little turn right here, wave goes soft. Let's look at this little right right here. It's a good wave. That turn was rough. That combination, just we were arguing, me and the board. Here's a good little quick wrap, but that's about it. Now that we looked at a few waves with me riding the board that was designed for a goofy footer, I was using words like me and the board weren't in agreement about turns. I didn't look comfortable from my perspective and the board didn't have flow. And that's okay. That's, this board was, this was an experiment for my own self, right? Shorter rail line on my front side. I'm thinking it's gonna turn faster and get up in the lip real quick, but we have to consider tail design with it being round, wanting to make round turns. There's less exit rocker here, so I couldn't get that, that quick pivot and turn. And then I didn't have anything to pivot off of either. So when I go into doing experiments like this, it really helps me to understand theory and design of what Matt did it's pretty simple for me. Matt took something that has always been a bit complicated for me to wrap my head around and made it easy. Shove some thruster fins in there, go surf, it rips. Pull those out, put a quad in there, maybe a little bit more speed, and it goes. Like this is a simple board. You can do great surfing in small one to four foot surf and have a blast.
Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Mason by Lost Surfboards. Special shout out thanks to Matt Biolos and the folks at Lost for sending these boards down for review. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfingshow.com. Aaron and I also want to thank you guys that found the donate tab below and have donated to us so we can keep these reviews coming. That's it for today. Until next time, see you in the water. Bye-bye.